Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode cool. 33. Thank you. That was nice. Yeah, I'm also moonlighting as a WWE announcer now. Wow, I yeah, was not expecting that. That's what I was practicing list. for. That's You like the crows, man. I don't know what that's to tell you. That's not a crow. I think that's a blue jay. It's just being really aggressive. I heard a, a hawk a minute ago, and that's probably why I'm hearing crows probably. right now. Or not crows, blue jays right now. Anyway, welcome to episode 33. Welcome to our bird cast. <laughs> and if you didn't know, your fun fact of the day is that uh, blue jays will pretend to be a cro- uh, hawk, and they will make a hawk noise to clear bird feeders so they can gorge themselves in peace. Oh, nice. Yeah. I don't mind because blue jays are pretty. I hate them. Oh, asshole. Cool. I do like that they scare away hawks, though. They will fight hawks. And I'm always afraid hawks are going to scoop up my little old old dog, so. That's fair. Yeah. So I, I will accept the Blue Jays, but not willingly. Hmm. Um, <laughs> so anyway, last week we left off. <laughs> oh, I'm Garrett. <laughs> I'm <Anyway>. Katie. <laughs> and this is our Stream of oh. Consciousness podcast. Yes. But last week we left off discussing... Um, PCOS and diabetes mostly. We got a little bit, I think, into infertility or at least hinted at it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where we landed, but um, but yeah. So usual. we're yeah <laughs> picking that up today. Uh, but good news, I didn't do any more research, so it's all, still all Garrett. Yep, stuck <laughs> with me. Um, stuck in the middle with you. And Katie's been truly like working with a karaoke machine today. Um, <laughs> But a lot of a lot of songs that really don't have to do with what we're talking about. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am. What was the buttons one? In the middle with you. Oh, it's like a pussycat doll song. <laughs> I'm gonna loosen up my buttons, baby, cause they're be 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 be. Na 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 buttons buttons. She's gonna get fired by her editor today. <laughs> Whatever. We're gonna listen to this and be like, oh my god, again. <laughs> But anyway, he probably side texts PK and it's like, your girl is whack. It's like, I hate this. Yeah. They're so lame. <laughs> um, so, yes, we are going to pick up that conversation and we hope you enjoy. Yeah. So after all of those really uplifting side effects, another side effect, another thing that I can cause is infertility. Um, so PCOS, obviously, as establish interrupts the normal menstrual cycle so by nature that's going to make it harder to get pregnant between 70 and 80 percent of people with pcos have fertility problems so you think about how many people have it have it and don't know it have it don't know it and have fertility problems (laughs) right so when i want i mean obviously you knew when you were going through um fertility treatments Mm -hmm. You knew that already that you had PCOS, but I wonder if they, do you know if they test for PCOS before they. So I had, so we tried for like six months and I talked to uh, my gynecologist and she ran blood work and was like, yes, this is all very typical of PCOS. Um, And then when we had the intake blood work done with the infertility place, they were like, yes, this is like textbook, all of this, all of these numbers. Okay. Um, So you can like. So I wonder if they do kind of screen it. Yeah. Um, So outside of PCOS, the general population is dealing with infertility rate of one in five. I've seen one in five. I've seen one in seven. Um, Still pretty high. It's still a lot of people. And sometimes it's just like unexplained infertility, which like I can't imagine. At least I knew that's what true. Was mine. Yeah. Um, but PCOS also increases the risk of pregnancy complications. So women with PCOS are twice as likely to have a baby prematurely, hmm. higher rate for miscarriage, and a higher rate of preeclampsia slash high blood pressure and gestational diabetes. Wow. Have you done that glucose test yet? No, I think I do that at like 26 or 28 weeks. What um, do you know? Huh? What do you know? Um, I'll be 18 weeks on Monday. Oh, okay. So I've got a little bit to go. Yeah. Um, so I have dealt with PCOS related infertility. My body does not release the proper amount of that luteinizing hormone to cause the eggs to fully mature and release. So I have that peel, peeled, no, pearled, pearled appearance because my body's like holding on to them. 
So one of the ways that they can see that, aside from from the imaging, um, is they one of the components of the panel of blood work that they do is for an anti-mullerian hormone. AMH is how it's abbreviated. Anti-malaria hormone? Mullerian. Oh. It's a, it's a U with <laughs> Anti-mosquitoes. <the>... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like I'm a U idiot. with the, the umlauts or whatever oh, over the top. Okay. L-L-E-R-I-A-N. Um, hmm. So that hormone is made by the ovaries. So usually when they're measuring AMH levels, it can provide information about like a lot of different reproductive types of conditions Um, but ultimately it it kind of indicates your ovarian reserves so if you look at like a table they'll have like okay age this it's normally this and age this is normally this so over time obviously as you release eggs your ovarian reserve is going to decrease Um, so the normal number is like for 30 to 35 is like 2.5 to 1.5 I don't even know what eggs. The... No, it's. <laughs> Do you want them over easy scrambled poached? Um, I don't know like what the um, unit of measurement is, but that's like the number is is like two point five to one point five. Mine okay. was seventeen point eight because I have all of these eggs that I'm not releasing, so oh, I just wow. had all of these little eggs just hanging out in there, not getting released with each cycle. Loving holding on to them like a hoarding i'm an egg hoarder um is it true that when you're when a person with ovaries is born they have 100 percent of the eggs mm-hmm. that they'll ever have yeah so like right now so we're having a girl she already has all of the eggs that she's going to have in her whole life so i'm carrying not only my child but if she has any children that's pretty cool isn't that a cool way of looking at it um so yeah like when you're born you have all the eggs that you're born with and it's i don't i don't remember what the number is it's a shit ton yeah and they either you know they die off they get released with every you figure every in theory every month for like 30 years of your life ish you're releasing an egg and sometimes you release two eggs so yeah mine was like off the charts so I got that and I was like, oh my God, I'm like, so I'm an overachiever. I'm so fertile. And they were like, that's not what that means. They were means. like, no, it's bad actually. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, oh my God, if 2.5 is fine, then 17 must be great. And I was like, like it literally the blood first type thing that comes A up plus is like, <laughs> this is also an indicator of PCOS. I was like, oh, fine, <laughs> whatever. Um, so we tried to get pregnant for like a couple of years without luck. So we wind up having to use science. Um, One of the nurses that I had a conversation with at the fertility place that we were working was saying she had a background in OBGYN. And when she started working there, she was like so confused by the treatment plan, like the process for all these fertility treatments. Cause she's like, I couldn't figure out like what, what the process was like, what the, what sequentially is supposed to happen. And the way they, the um, providers explained it to her was like, no two patients are the same and the process is so unique for everybody that there's like no two treatment plans that are going to be identical, which I thought was really interesting. And also So overwhelming. Yeah. (laughs) I guess that explains why they don't study it. Yes. Because there really is just like, (laughs) yes, there's like a million and one things that cause it. So what they do- Pregnancy or infertility? infertility <laughs> i think there's only one thing that really causes mm, pregnancy. yeah not the butthole no no not the poop hole loophole gets the mormons through i'm sorry <laughs> this is like katie today is if like you had one of, like you know when you're playing a game and you spin the dial like on twister <laughs> it's like what crazy thing is she gonna say <laughs> poop hole loophole maybe <laughs> gangrenous flappy doodles also maybe it's like a cursed magic eight ball yes that's exactly what it is we should add that to our merch the cursed magic eight ball yeah and poop hole loophole could be the one that's up on the (laughs) she just got so excited yeah Ah! perfect like on a sticker it would be great yeah i'd slap that on my water bottle no problem (laughs) it was the slapping that just (laughs) i was expecting it um 
So my like the the treatment that we did. So they do an intake where you have like they took all the vials of blood. I don't there were so many vials that they took. Um they do a full health history like it took like an hour and a half with them to go through like my whole family's health history, his whole family's health history. Um they do genetic testing. They do uterine imaging, which was done um, with, like, a saline solution and an ultrasound. A saline solution? Yep, that they pump into your uterus. um, And then it, like, basically runs right out so you feel like you're peeing yourself. Cool. Then they do uh, fallopian imaging, which I thought I was going to barf in front of a bunch of people. Oh, that was was the thing where they, like, inflated your whole stomach or something. Yeah, so you lay on a table and they put this thing in. And they basically inflate your uterus and then they put like contrast dye in so they can make sure, and then they do x-rays, they make sure that your fallopian tubes are clear, that you don't have anything like obstructing your, because they really need to make sure, okay, is there any structural reasons why they're Mm. not able to get pregnant? Um, I love that they do it all without pain meds for you though. That's so nice. uh, It was like, so it only, it doesn't last a super long time. Like it lasted maybe a minute, but- I was straight up like... It's a minute of pain that I bet your husband has never felt. No. I was like, am I going to vomit right now? And I then, of course, me being like now nervous in this situation because I'm legitimately afraid I'm going to vomit. The radiologist came in. So like I'm on the table. The nurse practitioner is there with me like doing the inflating or whatever torture device she was using. And he goes in like to the little booth and he, like, introduces himself. He's like, oh, I'm God. His name was, <laughs> I swear to God, it was, like, Dr. Cramp. And I said, well, that's fitting. <laughs> and I, st- I like, kind of laugh at myself because I'm like, that's a funny joke that I'm experiencing this over. I'm assuming it's probably what, like, a contraction feels like. But when it comes out of fucking nowhere, it really <laughs> hurts. So I was, like, trying to breathe my way through this. And he was like, excuse me? And I was like, cramp, cr- this is, I'm uncomfortable. Cramp, it was a joke. And he was like, oh, that's funny. Sir, he's a hit at parties. Throw me a fucking bone here. I am uncomfortable. <laughs> Laugh at my stupid joke. That's like having a name like Dr. Finger and you're a proctologist. Like what? I really thought you were going to say Dr. Fart, which also would have worked for proctologist. Also, yeah. Either way. <laughs> she was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? I'm Dr. Finger, and this is my partner, Dr. Fart. Welcome to Fingers and Farts Proctology and Associates. (laughs) Down the hall is Dr. Fuck. (laughs) He can take care of all your... That's the sex therapist. Oh, I was going to say urologist. Oh. I guess that fuck probably isn't. Anyway. Um, I hope not. I mean, unless you're Donald Trump. (laughs) 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 Got him. Oh, we're going to get fired from our own podcast. Um, I stand by it. So what they would have me do every cycle, you would wait for your period to start. You would have to call them when you got your period because you have to go in between like days one and day three of your cycle or something. Um, And you would have to go in for a baseline blood work and an ultrasound, a transvaginal ultrasound. So while you're bleeding? Oh, yeah. That's a nice touch. Um, And you had to guide it into yourself? There was only, like, one or two people. Most of them just would, like, do it. Which, please, just... Yeah, I'd rather you just do it. Like, like, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the... I mean, I guess I don't want you, like... component of it. Shoving it all of the way, like, too far in. But, like... You're a professional. You should know how far it needs to go. I would think. And also, I mean, it's... It's imaging. You can see where you are. Right. It's not like... Right away. You're diving blind. (laughs) I mean, you kind of are, but you're also not. Right. Yeah. Like So they would um I would do that and then they would have me start on there's a few different medications. I feel like they told me for PCOS specifically they use letrozole, which I think the that's the generic name for Femera, which is actually a breast cancer medication. Oh. Um, but what it does, so when you take something or clomid is another one that people do, but oh, they I've don't heard of clomid. Yeah, and that's like the same it's the same type of medication, but I think it the letrozole is supposed to be more effective with PCOS specifically. Oh, okay. So that helps to thicken your uterine lining and it helps those eggs mature. Um, so you do that and then after you take the medication, which for me, it gave me hot flashes. 
Yes, like, you were I very would... spicy 100% oh, of the time. Oh, my God. It was like, I mean, in the middle of the night, you would wake up, like, in a full sweat, like, like a hot, like menopause, like a hot sweat. Uh, hot sweat. Huh. It's not a cold sweat. All the sweats. Um, so then they would have me go back, do the same blood work, ultrasound, to make sure the follicles were maturing. And usually based off of that, you would either have to go for another check in a couple of days or they would say, okay, like you're, if you're at this point on this day, then in like this many days, you should be good. Um, so they, we tried to cycle to see like if my body would surge on its own, which is when you have that, that LH surge that then causes your egg to actually release. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to surge once on my own, but it was not a successful cycle. So the other thing that they do is when you reach the point where you're coming up on when it should be surging and the follicle is the right size, they'll have you do a trigger shot, which is actually a dose of HCG that you just like self-administer at home, um, which is that pregnancy hormone that we talked about way back in the pregnancy episode. Um, And that kind of then, I think it's like a 36 hour turnaround time when it's supposed to actually release the egg. But ultimately it took us like, Multiple rounds, we wound up doing IUI because it was not... Which stands for what? Uh, intrauterine insemination. Okay. Which is kind of like the step between, there's like ovulation induction, which is what we tried for a while. There's IUI, which is where they're just like a farm animal. Again, the farm animals are coming back up. Um, they're just injecting you, basically, which, again, was something that everybody was like, it's not that uncomfortable. Super fucking uncomfortable because they're dilating your cervix. Um, and it's not a Cheerio. And it's not a Cheerio, mm. um, and then, <laughs> or an almond. Um, and then there's also IVF, where they're actually, they're like increasing your egg reserve and then retrieving the eggs, and they're doing all of the fertilization the, Yeah, in vitro yes. fertilization. So instead of injecting you with semen that they like wash and spin down, it's, uh, she told me it was washed semen, and I was like, that sounds gross. Um you know, Dawn never puts that in their ads. It's always the duck covered in oil. <laughs> I really wish it was like a man just dressed up as semen, getting like hosed down and squirting him with Dawn. <laughs> You're welcome for more imagery you didn't want in your head. <laughs> um, yeah, with I, I know that with in vitro, they like take the eggs out of you that you yes. have actually ejected from your ovary i think they're taking them right from your ovary oh okay i think they they give you a medication to like i think you're probably doing the letrozole to make sure that like you've got follicles and then they're retrieving them they're fertilizing them right. waiting until you they have take embryos. your dawn sperm yep and then and you're retrieving together egg. yeah, yeah. And, and then, then they put the f- embryo the embryo yeah. yeah in in um and then Obviously, you're hoping for it to implant. So, um, if in, I mean, if anybody listening to this has gone through this or is starting the process, it's just – it's so stressful. It feels like it's endless. Sometimes for some people it is. I mean, there's the disruption physically. Like, all of my appointments were at, like, 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And it would be, like, four to five appointments per cycle. So while my spouse was sound asleep in a warm bed, I was getting up and trying to find clothes where it would be easy to pull up my sleeve for blood work, but also easy to take my pants and underwear off and my shoes. Um, You're just – you haven't been single recently because that's mm -hmm. how, like, I pick all my outfits. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. It has been a while since I've had to – assess how easy it was to take my pants off yeah um (laughs) there's also i mean i'm really lucky that my health insurance covered yeah pretty much everything although we did get a real nice uh 1600 bill for blood work but thanks to katie helped me write a letter to my insurance company and appeal it (laughs) and they paid for it Um, who says lawyers aren't helpful who says lawyers aren't helpful people who don't like lawyers um (laughs) Um, and it it makes it like really hard to plan anything because you don't know where you're going to be in your cycle and what if I have to have an appointment and you're also not supposed to be like drinking during any of this. Um, which is why, like, again, it's that thing. So stressful. Yeah. Like you're, um, I think you mentioned it in the last episode, but it was like, 
um, or in the PTSD episode, but like your um, your therapy because of all the construction and everything that's been going on and the shitty weather and then like the disruption at work mm-hmm. and having that whole schedule change. Oh, sorry, you haven't been able to do those things that you usually do to self soothe, like cleaning right. and walking and yep. like exercising. But then on top of like this whole disruption to your regular schedule with mm-hmm. these 6 a.m. doctor's appointments before work yep. and then, you know, potentially having afternoon appointments and then having to take all these medications and make sure that – I remember one time you had to get something delivered and it had to oh, be, like, yeah. refrigerated. So the so you had to, like, make sure somebody was home yes. and, like, you're coordinating all of these schedules. The injectables that they – the Ovidrill, which is that HCG injection, um, has to be refrigerated. So – they initially were like, you have to be home to receive it. Yeah. And then you find out later that it's in a refrigerated thing and it can sit for 24 hours without having – whatever. Yeah. Um, so, like, you're working with all of that. Right. But then on top of it, you can't have a glass of wine or oh, a yeah. beer and it's, or You can't whatever. travel because you don't know what yeah. you're – I mean, you probably could travel, but I was just so afraid well, of, like, exactly. missing a cycle. And it's that thing of, like – if I miss it, will I lose the progress I've made in like tricking my body to let me get pregnant up to this point? Yeah. So like you don't want to stop, but then you have that question of like, I mean, I know that you went through this thing of like, well, how long will we try? And like, oh yeah, because you have how much of this is worth it. Right. Yeah. And there's also the component of like, so they tell you if you can't get, I want to say six months. We gave it way more time than that because I was like – You did like all through COVID. You were trying. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to try and – I'm not going to involve science like way faster than I need to. Um, Another thing that they did not tell us, me really, (laughs) um, the first period that I had after taking the letrozole, like our first cycle, was – one of the most intense periods I've had and one of the ultrasound techs like very offhandedly mentioned to me, oh, because the medication you're taking thickens your uterine lining, it's probably going to be a really intense period. And I was like, nobody fucking told me that this whole time. Um, So if anybody is going through this process, just be aware. FYI. (laughs) Um, If you're taking something like Clomid or Letrozole, there's a very good chance that if you have an unsuccessful cycle, you're going to have the period of all periods. Um, But, you know. Somedays.com slash the bars and yes. high because oh, that, that cramp cream that and that, yeah, the the mask, like the, it, you can use it as like a mud mask or like a bath mm-hmm. soak. Mm-hmm. I feel like that would be really nice. I can't wait to use that heating pad. Yeah. I'm, I'm pumped for the heating pad, yeah. especially the, just that it's weighted. Oh. And the shape of it. Yeah. It's shaped like a pelt. Oh, it's just. Yeah. No, the heating is. pad is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pumped. I'm. It's yeah. too bad that you're not having a period now. Yeah. Because, <laughs> man, that would all be real handy. The cramp- I saw all this stuff and I was like, oh, my God. I know. Especially the cramp cream. Like, I would for sure be using it on my shoulders because I get Ugh. so tense when yes. I'm like – Because I know my low back is going to hurt, but, like, as a result, I'm, like, overcompensating in my shoulders. Ugh, it's the worst. Yeah. That stuff is – it's amazing. Um, And, like, we really – again, we – I really lucked out because we only lived, like – 15 minutes from the office true there's people who live you know an hour from the the nearest office and this is not this type of this course of treatment you can't get through like your OBGYN right you have to go to like a specialist for this so I mean it's you know 6 a.m appointments there are times where I was up at 5 30 in the morning trying to get myself ready for the day so I could be out the door by you know six so I could be to my six oh five appointment or whatever stupid time they would give you and the most frustrating thing is there's sometimes where you know if i was there that early there was a lot of people there i could be in and out in five minutes mm-hmm. and then i'm sitting there like now i have i don't have to be to now work for yeah an now hour. i'm wide awake with right, nothing to do i can't go home i can't go back to bed um so it's just like it's super disrupting um to your schedule and like who wants to start their day out with there was one day i went um and I had blood work done and I was like, normal, like normally I didn't even need a, a Band-Aid. Yeah. I would put one on anyway. So I was like, ah, you know, I think I'm good. And I stood up and I was bleeding all down my arm, all over the floor. I was like, oh my God, I'm not good. No, I need a Band-Aid. I lied. I lied. Oh my goodness. <laughs> just like, oh. Um, so yeah, it's just like a very stressful process. And I have to think of it like we didn't go the IVF route. Like we went the yeah. least invasive of these and it was still like – so incredibly stressful, taxing, like 
Well, and I mean, even leading up to it before you got the fertility group involved, like it's still stressful because, you know, every month it's like, I mean, even at that point it was like, am I even going to get a period? It? So like, with, let me especially tell you, with PCOS. Before even going to this, I was so relieved the first time we had a conversation with the provider because I was like, can I stop taking my God forsaken temperature every day? Because one of the things they tell you to do, which I feel like is pointless for PCOS is taking your temperature every day and it's not just taking your temperature it is literally like the second you open your eyes you have to take your temperature and the thermometers that they use for your I can't even remember what the name of it is there's like a special name for it type of thermometer but anyway anal rectal no it goes in your mouth um (laughs) (laughs) poop hole Nope. Um, <laughs> my special brand of thermometer, the poop hole loophole thermometer. <laughs> no, it's a, it goes in your mouth. <laughs> um, well, if basil. I had a nickel for every time I heard that one, sorry. <laughs> it's your basal temperature and it's the same as a regular thermometer, but it has, it's two, it's, it goes to the hundredths, not the tenths after the decimal point. So it takes forever for the reading to come through because it's like more accurate. So you're literally, I would put it in my mouth. I would fall asleep with it in my mouth and then it would beep and I would wake up and then have to like record the thing in my phone. It was just like, and why? So it's supposed to be that like you, when you go through your cycle, um, you have, uh, your temperature is supposed to increase right before you ovulate. So it's supposed to help you predict ovulation. Um, you can also do test strips but if you have PCOS and you don't know when the fuck you're going to ovulate or get your period, it makes it really hard. I'm like, I'm not going to buy 10 million test strips. Right. Um, so, yeah, I just – PCOS adds a layer of unpredictability. I think, like, if you were just regularly trying to get pregnant, all of those things would be great tools. But if you don't know – if it's the Wild West yeah. with your reproductive organs and you don't know what's going to happen, then, I mean – Well, and then it's – if you're, you know – what 70 percent of the people who don't know that they even have it right you're doing all of these things and being like why can't like why is my temperature never changing or why is it was all over the place yeah i would look at a chart and i'm like how the fuck am i supposed to predict my what this predicts nothing right like either i ovulate every other day for a week or i don't ovulate for four months yes and then either way i'm misting (laughs) i'm misting all the time i don't even know why am i damp So, yeah, it's just, like, I, that was one of the things I was, like, in the middle of the conversation. I'm like, wait a second. Can I stop taking my temperature? She was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, thank God. It's just, like, one of those things that was so annoying to have to do. And then she was like, you know what? I'm just going to blow up your uterus just for saying that. You know what we're, we're going to instead? Inflate the fuck out of it. So we wound up, and if you're going through this, I do recommend, like, taking breaks. Like, we took a summer off, and, man, like, it was so necessary. It yeah. was just... It's so stressful. And we had gone through like three or four cycles that were unsuccessful. So we took a summer off and started a podcast, (laughs) started a podcast, a little traveling. Um, But they told me, because I was like, is it okay if we like take a break? And she was like, yeah, just don't take a break for more than six months because then we have to do the intake stuff again. And let me tell you, you want to motivate motivate me? me. (laughs) Yeah. I, I literally made an appointment. It was like, I got my period at like month five. I was like, thank God. But even then, I would have called them and been like, then give me the progesterone so I get my period because I'm not, I am not doing that for and imaging again. Oh, absolutely. I mean, realistically, I mean, I understand why they'd be like, well, we have to make sure. I'd be like, well, let's just trust the process here. Like, My fallopian tubes are fine. Yeah, nothing else was up in there. We know what the problem is. I keep hardly anything in that. We know that my ovaries hoard. Right. Fallopian tubes, on the other hand, clear as bell. No problems. (laughs) Um... So uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend if you're if you're doing all these things back to back, definitely take some downtime in between, take a few cycles off, shake off some of the stress of it because it is so stressful. And it's funny because like you'll read the the all the paperwork that they give you at the beginning, um, and it's like make sure you consider going to therapy because it's a really stressful process. Um, Fuck yeah. Yeah, I also wound up on uh, Zoloft, which definitely helped uh, with the stress of that. Right after you got IUI did. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, had IUI started on 
Zoloft and then found out I was pregnant within like Well, that's not the exact order. You had IUI, then your oven broke the day before Thanksgiving, then you started Zoloft, and then you found out you were pregnant. That's true. (laughs) Our oven did break. Your oven broke, and then you were like, I think I have to go on Zoloft. And I was like, that is the right choice. (laughs) Yes. I forgot about that also horrific component that happened. (laughs) That was... There's been a few times that I've really hit critical mass to the point that I literally had to just lay on the couch and stare at the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's fair. Because, yeah, yeah, I mean, as the, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just, it's the kind of thing where it's like, there's, there's no workaround really for that when you're hosting Thanksgiving. Yeah. So like if if you were just going to be like, oh, I said I was going to bring a dessert or whatever. No, I can't. Then yeah, that would be an excessive reaction, Garrett. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be an excessive reaction. But yeah. like in that case, because especially you can just go to the grocery store and get like one of those lovely cheesecakes from those nuns. <gasps> those are good, those right? Nooski tree. Oh my god, they are so good. My mom is so mad that they're not gluten free. <laughs> she uh, loves them. Yeah, they're good. Is there flour in the? It's the crust. Oh, I'd be eating. I'd be. Oh, I mean, it. my mom has said. Um, I mean, they might put flour in the batter, though. I put flour in my batter. That's what I was trying to remember. Um, like, is there flour in if it? I make it for her, then I put cornstarch. But yeah, it's just like a tablespoon. But it'll set her off. I mean, oh. she'll be violently ill. So, yeah, no, she's. <laughs> if she ever gets a terminal diagnosis, we'll know because the first thing she's gonna do is get a Big Mac. <laughs> oh. I can't blame her. Yeah. I was like, that makes sense. I would probably do the same thing. Like, yeah. it'd be like that scene from Dr. Doolittle with the lady who can't eat shellfish and, like, denies that she has a shellfish allergy. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, your face is blown up. Right. Exactly. Um, so anyway, yeah, like everything else we talk about on this podcast, you know, do what works for you. Be patient. Be kind to yourself. I definitely would periodically wind up. I think pretty much... Every time I got my period, which is like, you figure the hormone series of events that happens anyway, I feel like it makes ADHD worse. Totally. It makes, it would make my anxiety worse. I was also like super fatigued, which makes all of those things worse. Um, And then finding out like I had another unsuccessful cycle. This means I have to start this whole process over again. It's so disrupting. Like, well, and it's just, you know, like disappointing. Like when you're, you want to be pregnant, you want to have totally, you know, a child and you're, you know, your spouse is also disappointed, but then there's, I'm sure there's like a certain dynamic um, with your partner because there's nothing that they can do to fix it. And I feel like, especially for men, like I know that PK would struggle with not being able to do anything. Oh, definitely. And like knowing that I was really the root of it. Mm. Um, and they tell you like, it's not, there's no blame. No, like, yeah, but if there's two of us and right, like my body is the one that's causing the problem. Right. Like I know I'm not to blame, but at the same time, the reality is my body that's causing the problem. Especially when you're sitting there. Like I remember the, the worst one was I had thought I was pregnant, Mm. got my period. And it was like, a day before Mother's Day or two days before Mother's Day. And it was just like, the timing was terrible. I felt terrible. I actually wound up using a sick day at work. And I like went and I went to like a garden center or something. I got the garden set up for the season. And I, it totally helped and I felt much better. But um, And didn't, I mean, it's also that thing of like, I know that you've heard it before. I don't know if you heard it this time that you're talking about. But like, oh, well, dogs count too. And like, oh, I cannot tell you, I mean, I don't want to speak for other people, people that, so that most, this past Mother's Day, so Mother's Day 2022, um, I would have people asking about Mother's Day, talking about Mother's Day, what their plans were for Mother's Day, and then saying, oh, well, you know, your dogs, you're a dog mom. There is nothing more fucking condescending for you to say to me right now. And of course, like, I'm not openly telling people, like. Right. Hey, we're going, because it's not something you really want to talk about. Totally. I think there's like a component and it's, it was, it was so hard for me because part of me felt like, well, I don't want anybody to think it's like a secretive thing that like they shouldn't talk about with people. But the yeah. flip side is I don't think people understand and they don't know what to say. So, yeah. and then there's on top of that, the component of 
when you have, like, you don't want to tell people when you're going through a cycle because then they're going to ask you questions. And then when you have an unsuccessful cycle, like I'm already having a hard time with it. And now I have to like talk to this other person about it. For sure. I mean, I didn't ask you how your IUI went other right. than like, how are you feeling the day that it happened? And I was like, that was fucking awful. And everybody's a liar. And I'm <laughs> on my couch. <laughs> but I didn't ask you like, no. how are you feeling? Like, yes. are you feeling nauseous? Or you you know, do your fingernails hurt or whatever the mm-hmm. like mild, weird symptoms of early pregnancy are. Oh yeah. I didn't have that one. Yeah. My, one of my friends did. She said that she knew she was pregnant with her third because her fingernails hurt. That's wild. Yeah. It was like that her nail beds felt like really tender. Huh. Yeah. No, my indicator was uh, my PMS order would. (laughs) What? My, like the, the, the sequence of my PMS was always (laughs) that my, (laughs) my nibbles would hurt first. Okay. And they'd be super, super sensitive. Like not like even clothes touching them hurt for like a couple of days. Then my boobs would hurt really bad. And that would go on for like a week and a half. And then I would get my period. Um, with this, when I was pregnant and I, of course, after so many like unsuccessful cycles and trying for like two and a half years by the time I got pregnant, I didn't want to say out loud that I thought I was pregnant. Cause I'm like, yeah, this happened. Like there was like probably two or three cycles ever that I legitimately thought. And those were like the worst periods I had because you were like, your body was gearing up for a really intense cycle. Um, so I didn't want to like say it out loud, but, um, I was like, Oh, my boobs hurt real bad but the sequence was not that my nipples hurt first and then my boobs it was just mm. my boobs hurt um so I was like oh this is a little bit different like I do feel like I'm PMSing but it's different um and even then like we had a, a pregnancy test scheduled and I had one test left from our a home last test. yeah a home test left for my unsuccessful cycles um and I was like well I have this one test left let me do it at home Because I don't, I was going, I was going to be in the office and I didn't want to be like blindsided. Because you also had to go to all of these appointments alone. Your spouse wasn't allowed to go with you. Well, that was the other thing too, is like, it was so stupid to me because when we did the intake stuff, we obviously both had to go because he also had to have like a semen analysis done. He had to have blood work done. Um, But when I was going for like follow-up stuff, like I went to everything by myself so you do your blood test and it and came this, back. this was 2022. Like this wasn't April and May of 2020. No. So like the extreme pro- like protocols so here extreme. was very frustrating. And it was like so bizarre to me, like especially for like it the IUI arbitrary. and the, the yeah. uh, fallopian imaging, like yep. these painful procedures, like you don't have your support person with you. Nope. I had to go by myself yeah. and we did the, we had the blood work done and then the blood work came back positive. Um, and then you have a, a seven week ultrasound and then they like graduate you back to your, your OBGYN's office and the seven week ultrasound, he was not allowed to come to. So like literally the first time we were like going to see the baby, he couldn't come to that appointment. So weird. And I, we went two weeks after that, we went to our obstetrician's office and they were like, yeah, of course he can come. I was like, well, uh, this is planet bullshit. And the last place would let him come. Which is also very weird because it's almost like it's divorcing you as a couple yeah. from experiencing the pregnancy together. Yeah. And and everything that it entails. I mean, like, because, okay, so, like, naturally conceiving, like, mm-hmm. the old-fashioned way, you, I hope, are in a loving relationship, and I know that you are, but, like, people <laughs> who do this. <laughs> what are you trying to say? You're, you know, you are experiencing right. an intimate moment with your partner when you are conceiving the baby right so you have the creation quote unquote of Mm. of the initial embryo when life starts (laughs) no no (laughs) just Just absurd the injection of the unwashed sperm the injection before the ejection (laughs) the unwashed sperm the filthy sperm (laughs) the dirty sperm The, uh, but like, that's an intimate moment and something that like is, I think, you know, when you're with somebody that you really love is a beautiful thing to be able to share. And so then you're not only kind of, um, that part of that pregnancy process is already, you know, taken away from you by having this kind of, even with before the IUI, with the trigger shots, it 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 takes the romance out of it. Like, you know, you have friends that. They're, like, trying, 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 and then they, like, go through the whole process of, like, a home pregnancy test, like, being together or the whole thing. I did a home pregnancy test. My spouse was traveling when I did it, so I was by myself. 
<laughs> at like five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what the fuck do I do with this information now? I can't tell anybody. <laughs> I can't even tell him because he's not awake yet. I'd be like vibrating. <laughs> I was. I was like. I can't believe you waited like three days to tell me, frankly. Oh, I did. Yeah. yeah. It was, it's, it's actually the only other person that knew, um, one of our Patreons actually, who lives pretty far away, like knew that we were like going through the stuff. So, and she knew my test was the next day. So mm. she texted me, how you holding up champ? I was like, well, listen, I did a test this morning. She goes, okay, so we're feeling impatient. That's, <laughs> that's how it's going. It's like, uh, yes, we are. <laughs> But also happy. It was also positive. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was very frustrating. They also don't let you record anything. So I couldn't even like record a little video of the ultrasound. Because so you could see the little flicker of the heartbeat. Oh, cool. So I wanted to like show him that. Right. No, you can't. Yeah. And so like I also think, I mean, I've heard that um, men in particular can like struggle with feeling connected to the pregnancy. Also, it's... people on Zoloft, even if they're pregnant, can struggle to connect. <laughs> well, like, especially uh, until they can feel the kicks, yeah, like from yeah, yeah. the outside of the the abdomen. Um, because it's this thing, like, right. Okay, not, it's a picture on a screen. The symptoms, right. Like they can't see anything. You're not showing. Like it is very right. easy to feel disconnected. So, from. which I also has, I've heard that that's one of the theories of why, like, you make a baby for 10 months in your body, but it comes out looking like your spouse. Mm -hmm. And evolutionarily, right. you do that so that they stick around. <laughs> males don't kill the offspring. Like, what the, f like, and you know, honestly, if, for anybody that either has been pregnant or is pregnant now or, you know, whatever, um, especially after having gone through the infertility process, there are definitely times where I look at him and I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Um, I can't fit in my pants. <laughs> I don't have pants. <laughs> I spilled beer on the only pair of pants I own. Literal direct quotes from me <laughs> in the last like two months. And it's, it's one of those things I was like, oh, I have pants that, like fit looser or more forgiving, you know, that I'll be able to fit for like, ex no, week five, my ass was like, no, you pants. You can't wear pants. You also had, um, like, the ligament pain that you were like, what the hell? Like, I walked in to record. You were like, what is this? Oh, my God. My stomach hurts. First, I thought something was wrong. I was like, why am I? I had to, like, look it up. But the ligament pain, which they're like, it doesn't start till second try. No, I had that, like, at week five. Um, and even now, like, if I laugh the wrong way or it's usually if I'm laughing, um, you get these real intense belly pains. Um from like the ligament stretching around yeah. your uterus. But um, yeah, it, it, there's definitely like an element and I know it's definitely not going to improve over time. Um, but you look at your spouse and you're like, if you don't feed me carbs right now, <laughs> I'm going to riot. I'm sure you don't want to share the details of the story, but I do remember one part where your spouse was like upset at one thing he had to do for this testing that he could semi-complete at home yes so another little fun detail of infertility treatments is the seam analysis which used to be done in the office which to be frank you're jerking it into a cup and they're spinning it and testing it to count like the motility of the sperm and like the sperm count and like how healthy they are and then um, they put it in the tub and they give it a little scrubby scrub and then they give it a bath <laughs> <laughs> um, I, was, I wish that will never stop look. being my favorite part. The look on that nurse's face when I was like, "I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Washed?" <laughs> you, the frustration. She was like, "Jesus Christ!" Um. So they now, post COVID, I guess they have you do it at home, and you just have to like bring it in with like X amount of time. But they want you to keep it like body temp. So they ask you to like tuck it in your jacket or inside your shirt, or, like in the waistband of your pants. My spouse was really hung up on having to carry this specimen into the office. Like, how awkward is it that I have to, I was like, how awkward is it? Let me tell you, I had to ask them, I had to guide a wand in this morning yeah, at 6 o'clock. I spend 30% of my entire week spread eagle on a table. Yes. <laughs> And sometimes I'm on my period when I have to do it. Which that is, is the awful. worst. Oh my god, that that surprise! I didn't realize. And that it's you like had to in your brain, time. you're like, it's natural. You know, this is like, what's more natural than your period? It's just like when you go to the gynecologist. Yeah, but I still in anyway. Like I still feel gross yes. during my period. Like right. I I understand that like it's obvious. It's not like a fucking fire hose coming out of me. Yeah, but no, like but still. it still makes me feel icky. Yes, and having somebody like 
moving around stuff down. Like, I don't have intercourse when I'm on my period. Same. So, like, I'm the same no. Way. Just not something I'm down with. Yeah. Like, I don't mind my period. Like, I, you know, all the things. I don't mind, like, the messiness of the period and whatever else. And side note, diva cups are, or, or period cups really are, like, totally the way to go for me. Um, but I don't want other people associated with it. Like, it, to me, it's for such sure. a private thing. Yeah. Um, that, you know, I just like, I don't like going to the gynecologist when I'm on my period. So yeah, it was, um, that was a thing I was not fully prepared for. Um, and depending on like when I go, like the first two or three days are always like the heaviest. And then after that, it's like, it's not as bad, but that's when you're going is like the first couple. Right. Like, yeah, they don't give a shit. (laughs) Yeah. And I, and that the one morning I was like, man, this period's like really bad. And she was like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. It makes your endometrial lining heavier and i wanted to flip the table i was like why the fuck did nobody tell me this i think that is also a consequence slash symptom whatever of just the pregnancy experience in general there's so much there's so much to know and so much i think throughout history to know yeah it's it's like relied on um you know what the women in your family tell you about it yeah to expect and like potentially what your mother-in-law tells you about her own experiences or whatever. It was all very, it was like an oral history because again, they weren't writing about it in fucking medical books. So like women, especially if you were in a rural area, you didn't have a gynecologist. You had some guy who was also like the town judge (laughs) and like also worked at the post office. Yeah. And (laughs) was the the veterinarian that did the insemination for the horses. (laughs) And, (laughs) Who would, like, come over and, yeah, they, they, like, deliver the baby, but, like, whatever. Yeah. You know, like, that, frankly, after 10 months, that's kind of the easy part. <laughs> it, it, it's it's wild, and it, it's kind of like, like, I go to the, the obstetrician appointments, and they're like, do you have any questions? And I'm like, always. I don't, should I? Like, no, I, I mean, really, and not to, like, knock, I don't want to, like, knock on one, but it's been, like, a pretty smooth pregnancy I haven't been, my symptoms haven't been really bad. Like, I've been pretty comfortable. Well, and we also have poop, Google. So and you, we have Google. You can, like, you can Google up. why, yeah, right. like, what's this pain that I'm having at week five or right. whatever. So, yeah. yeah, I go and, like, do you have any questions? I'm like, no, should I? What should I, be? like, am I supposed to be asking something that I'm not asking? Um, because I do feel like there's that expectation, like, oh, you don't know about this thing? No. Why well, are you telling me about this? And thing? it's because it's so individual, though. Too, it's right. kind of that thing of like, you know, you're like my my friend's early pregnancy symptom was that her fingernails hurt. Wild. Like, so if that's the sign for her, that you had no recollection of that. My and fingernails like, were fine. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, like for all I know, my boobs never really get sore when I'm on my period. Mm-hmm. Like, I may not have sore boobs. Oh as my a god, symptom. I couldn't even stand a hug. Um. No. I tried to go braless one day and I thought I was going to, I scrimped. <laughs> I thought my nipples were going to wear off my, <laughs> wear right off. <laughs> like Andy in the office. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt. That is exactly, except the thought of having to put adhesive on them would have been like too much. But Just it's. holding your t-shirt. I, I literally was. I tried to go braless and I was like, oh my God. this. And I was wearing like a soft cotton shirt and I was like, this is a mistake. I can't do this. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> oh my God. Um. Awful. Yeah, it's yeah, it's totally and like it's. I'll talk to my you know my mom like, hey, did you have this? I've had terrible insomnia this whole time. I literally, if it wasn't for Unisom, I would probably be dead by now. Um, and my mom's like, I was just so tired, like I couldn't. I'm like, no, I'm also tired, but I also can't sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, don't get me wrong, <laughs> I am exhausted independently of not sleeping, but also can't sleep. Um, so yeah, it is crazy that it is such an individual thing and it's like pretty much anything that can happen. They're like, oh yeah, that can happen with pregnancy. What? I never knew that pregnancy was going to make me as constipated. How come nobody told me that? Yeah. Just another side effect that they're like, oh yeah, that can happen. And And then you get questions like, are you making healthy choices? Can, can you take anything though for your constipation? We don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Good question. (laughs) Um, Only somebody would look into that, huh? You can, but they don't want you to take it a lot. So it's like, okay, but what if I'm constipated all the time? <laughs> right. Like, also, what if you're anemic and you have to take an iron supplement that also makes for you For sure will make you constipated. constipated. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Of constipation. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's uh, definitely like a whole body experience and no one knows anything. <laughs> 
Um, I will say as a friend of somebody who is going through infertility, it was worthwhile for me to find a few Instagram accounts of women who Mm -hmm. were dealing with infertility to give me context for what you were going through so that I didn't have to say like, so what's next? So how are you feeling? So what's going on? Oh, oh is this like, it, they kind of like answered all of it because they're kind of like influencer E. Right, right, right. They would like say those things of like, this is not the right thing to say. Mm. Of like, oh, well, like if you had a, a miscarriage or a missed mm-hmm. pregnancy or whatever, um, you know, say like, well, at least you know you can get pregnant. No, that's not helpful. Oof. That's not a yeah. good thing to say. Yeah, Even though you're coming from a, a place of like, like you said, people just don't know what to say. Yeah. And like you're coming from this place of like feeling awkward and like you should say something. Right. Because there is that thing of like, well, I know like obviously you're trying. So I know that you wanted right. this. Right. And you haven't gotten it yet. But also there's nothing I can do. I cannot. Oh, fix, yeah. There's nothing that I could right. offer or give or <laughs> provide. Oh, yeah. It's I like, mean, there's it's nothing like... I could do to help. So it's, it is – it's easy to like slip into saying the wrong thing with the best of intentions, mm-hmm. but it's still the wrong thing. Right. So, um, yeah. And you finding... feel bad too. Cause then like, there's also the guilt that I'm feeling. Cause I'm like, I know that I'm unpleasant to be around right now, but I, it's just like, so it was stressful. I was also doing it in the winter time. Yeah. Freeze Olaft. Yeah. That's the um, best time of year for you. Oh You're yeah. Definitely. Your best. It's, you know, what's great <laughs> is when you have to get up at, uh, the butthole of dawn but it's not dawn. It's pitch black outside. That's and, why it's the butthole. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and it's five degrees outside. Yeah. Did you get locked just, out at one point? Oh my God. I forgot about that. So there was, <laughs> there was one morning that, um, okay. So it was like the last check I was having done before I would have to do the trigger shot. So this was like, okay, like we're going to find out like if this is it, like if it's time. And I had like a six o'clock appointment. And I have keyless entry in my car and I just leave my keys in my bag. So I grab my bag, I go out to my car, I get in, I close the door and I go to start and it tells me I don't have my keys. And I'm like, well, shit. So I go back up to the house. I look in the kitchen window and I can see my keys sitting on the counter. <laughs> I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh, God damn. So I text my spouse. I'm like, hey, I'm locked out. Wait a minute. Nobody answers. And mind you, like, you know, I'm not leaving early for these appointments because it's so early in the morning and they're going to get me right in. So, like, why would I leave early? Right. So you don't leave with, like, 15 minutes to spare or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I'm literally leaving, like, right when I need to. So um, <laughs> I wait a second. I call him. He's not answering. He has two phones, so I'm calling his other phone. He's not answering. I'm knocking on the door. He's not answering. Um, I might have rung the doorbell. I must have rung the door. There's like no way that I reached this point yeah. of rage and I hadn't rung the doorbell. <laughs> um, I'm like calling other people in the house. No one is answering. Nobody. So at this point I'm like. I would have that feeling of like, did I die and not realize? Yeah. Am you know I that play, that, that Our Town play where she's like dead and she doesn't realize it? That's, yeah, that's what yeah. it feels like. You're like, I'm awake, right? Like I woke up for this appointment <laughs> It got to the point where I went to, like, the window nearest our room, and I was just pounding on the window, and he eventually woke up, and I felt bad, because he, he's, like, half awake, and I, like, blasted him, like, God, I'm going to be like this part of that. I mean, but, like, honestly, it was awful. to be able to sleep through that is, like, it is so frustrating when people don't wake up when you need them to. You know what's more frustrating is when everyone insists that I'm always up at this time. Being the person that's always up at that time, No. No, nobody's up at that time. I'm the only one up at that time. Um, yeah. Well, you could always have called PK because that man never puts his phone on vibrate. Ever. Unless we're in, like, a movie theater. I don't even know the last time my phone was on a ring. Oh, no. I, the other night he slept over and I was, like, sending shit to the group chat. His phone was buzzing and making noise. What? Oh, all the time. But he doesn't wake up because he has a fucking apnea mask and he's dead of the world. Yep. I was like, then why bother? Like, just put it on silent and, like, do not disturb. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, I know. It is. It will be changing. I can't even wrap my head around. Like, if I hear my phone, I immediately get, like, an adrenaline rush. Like, (gasps) because I did that when my phone went off. (laughs) If you heard Katie's alarm (laughs) to take her meds. 
we weren't recording at that point, but it was a little bit of a drum intro interlude. Yeah, it was very funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I don't even know the last time I had my phone on Ring. I mean, I put it on Ring sometimes when I'm like expect like especially if like pk is coming over i'm expecting mm -hmm. somebody to get there yeah but i'm also doing other things yeah 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 i'll put it on ring but i actually now that i'm thinking about it i stopped ever having it on ring because i had a really stressful job i know with someone that would call me that's why you put me on do not disturb all the time i put uh, there's a ton of people on do not disturb <laughs> because it it would it would like trigger an adrenaline rush yeah. when it would happen so i was like you know a good way to avoid this is if i don't ever have it on ring <laughs> And it, it really has, it does help. Um, but I can't, I don't even know the last time I had my phone like willingly on ring. Yeah. That sounds like hell on. It was Earth. wild. How does he live that way? I don't. PK, how do you live that way? PK, the people need answers. <laughs> we need to know. I would also, we should have a poll. How many people oh, yeah. ever have their motherfucking phone on ring? Because like, I, I don't even know the last time. No, that is his status quo. It's more likely to be on vi on ring than on vibrate. Like eight times out of ten, it'll be on ring. Wild. That's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what my text tone is. I know what his is. <laughs> I used to have the if anybody has an iPhone, the Sherwood Forest ringtone used to be my text tone, and I only chose it because my spouse found it annoying. It's the only reason I used it. You deserve each other. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> There's two, there's two things I relish. We've been together like 12 years now. Um, times when I can be the annoying one and times when I can gross him out. Those are my, I, I wait for those moments mm -hmm. and I relish them. I t was telling somebody about that text on thing and they were like, that's not very nice. And I was like, he does shit to annoy me all the time. <laughs> Guess what? Not very nice. <laughs> you know what it was? It was funny seeing the look of frustration Every time I got a text. <laughs> Doesn't he set his phone background as like a horrible picture of you or something? So we do this thing where when one person leaves, if they leave their phone out, we'll take a purposely really bad picture and set it as the wallpaper. That's what it is. Which for a long time was always like, ha hey, got you. And we would like laugh it off. Then I realized he started leaving it as his wallpaper <laughs> just to spite me, which, okay, you win. That stops the game. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore because he'll like be at work and then this horrendous picture of me pops up on his phone as his wallpaper. Um, so now I have a picture of him and this is going to sound gross, but in a hot tub when he was 12 with a bottle of champagne as my <laughs> wallpaper and I will never change it. His caller ID in my phone is when he's wearing those big clogs. <laughs> That's great. Excellent. And there's a version of me also wearing the clogs, but it's funnier when he's wearing them. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there are things that I relish in being annoying and grossing him out. Actually, grossing Katie out was also on my list of things yeah, I relish. It's harder it's, to do. Yeah. It's unusual that I'm the one to gross you out. It's true. Usually it's the other way around. Yeah. Well, my mom worked in labor and delivery for 15 mm -hmm. years and then worked in the OR. Like, mm -hmm. the stories that I've heard are just... Oh, yeah. Plus, I love those pimple popping videos. I used to watch those all the time. And the, the, like dental descaling videos i have not seen that Those i don't know good. if i could handle that They're good that would skeep me out yeah it makes me feel way better about myself that you that. see yeah there is an element of that like when i see somebody with a big growth i'm like well at least i would get my growth taken care of sooner maybe maybe unless it's like <laughs> this mysterious pelvic pain i was feeling that i realized was round ligament pain and i briefly thought i was dying <laughs> so i guess that's infertility that was infertility um I've got a couple other, like, oh. points, but, I mean, it's just really, there's, there's like, some studies that they've done about ADHD and PCOS. Um, there's no, like, direct tie linked between the two, and they basically said, like, the research needs, like, more testing done before they can, like, what? definitively say that. We finally found the black hole in research. I know. It's never happened. Mm. Everything we found has been so airtight in the past. Mm. Um they Shame. did say that women or people with PCOS are more likely to suffer from mental health disorders, um, which we covered, you know, that depression, anxiety, but there's oh, also... Yeah, it's all hormonal and it will affect your brain chemistry, so... Bi bipolar disorder, there's also a link oh. with that, um, oh. which I mean, like, if you've got really inconsistent hormones or a major totally. imbalance... Oh my gosh, that must be so challenging yes. to be dealing with bipolar disorder and PCOS. Yes. Um, and there's also some evidence to suggest that 
um, women with or people with PCOS that have children, those children have a slight increased risk of developing ADHD and autism spectrum disorders, which again, who fucking knows because we don't research anything on the bright side. I did see that um, there are current studies focusing on genetics and PCOS, environmental exposure and PCOS risk, ethnic and racial differences in PCOS symptoms, um, medicines and supplements to restart ovulation, um, obesity and PCOS, as well as health risks for children of women with PCOS. So there is studies happening. But well, who knows if they'll ever finish it and if there will actually be, um, like, evidence to deliver and what they'll do. Yeah, so I guess that means, you know, vote for people who support federally funded science grants. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because that's the only way that they're going to keep funding this research. Like, Yeah. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that movie, The Departed, but there's that line where Mark Wahlberg goes, Quee gives a shit. And I feel like that's the attitude about all yeah. of this stuff. It's like... Or you'll hear some, some, you know, male scientist being like, well, until my daughter experienced this, like the, like the fucking Von Willebrand dying. And they're like, maybe we should look into this. Huh. That's weird. Yeah. Well, the other girls did that. That one died real fast. Yeah. It's it's fucking crazy. So awful. But anyway, so that was, um, polycystic ovarian, some diabetes, um, or diabetes, depending on if you're Wolf or Brimley or not, um, or the sugar, <laughs> um, and infertility. That was mostly it, and infertility. Yeah. So that was a good two-episode series, yeah. actually. Yeah. Good job. And we'll continue that, too, because I feel like we should also do an episode on, like, PMS, PMDD. Yeah, there's been a lot of um... – I've seen a lot of things like PMDD, but then there's also been a lot of requests for us to cover hormones and transitioning. Yeah, Um, which that's another one like I know is going to be research intensive. So I've been trying to not focus on other things, which, as we know, is hard. (laughs) But at least your construction is done. Yeah. And you can do laundry. I can do laundry. We have laundry connected. Yay. I only had to beef with Lowe's for three days. <laughs> she farted and... all the way at Lowe's. <laughs> Actually, I probably did. <laughs> Another pregnancy side effect. Um, <laughs> yep, Lowe's flaked on a delivery, but now they're here. I have a washer and dryer connected, from what I can tell. And um, I don't have people in and out of my house cutting tile, so that's also a plus. Yeah. And when I have to pee in the middle of the night, I have a toilet right there. That's a special order. Yeah. yeah. And nobody has shat in it yet. We did have to special order a extra short toilet because conventional toilets are too tall for my little legs. <laughs> and then my legs fall asleep and my feet swing. And who wants that? It's like the opposite of Buddy the Elf when he's in the North Pole. <laughs> yes. Yes. I need that toilet in my bathroom. Not a regular toilet. Papa Elf. <laughs> Which we only found out by buying a regular toilet before, and I was like, oh, this is too tall. <laughs> he was like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's too tall for me. So we have, like, toddler toilets in our house. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a potty training toilet, and I'll be fine. <laughs> right. So, yeah, we have a, a working bathroom and a working laundry, which is a bath. And I was able to dust, so I am not covered in a fine layer of dust at all times. Yeah. So... Point being. Some improvements. Yeah, you'll and have the bandwidth. Spring. Yeah. And you'll have the bandwidth to I will have the bandwidth. do the research. And we will also have more sunlight soon. Yep. Which will also help. Mm-hmm. Now if we could just get rid of the snow, I'll be good to go. Yeah. And by that time, I'll fully be waddling. Yeah. And by that time, I'll be mid-move panicking oh, my yeah, life great. away. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. It's, you guys have we'll a lot to look forward off. to. <laughs> We're just going to trade off stressful. We'll just trade stressors. Yeah. Back and forth. And, um, yeah, and we'll be thriving the whole time. <laughs> yes. And make sure you tune into our Patreon um, to hear me explode a beer. <laughs> and make sure you re-listen to the beginning of the previous episode when I dumped water all over myself. For more clumsy snippets, <laughs> join our Patreon. Well, and really, like, snippet advocacy, really, in that Patreon episode, too. With our uh, rant on farm animal accoutrement. 
Yep. <laughs> There's a lot of, <laughs> lot of farm animal coverage. So yeah, that's uh, patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. And yep. make sure you leave us a five-star review. Become an anklet. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you actually like write out the review on Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. it's like way more helpful. It gets us more exposure. And it is legitimately working because we know that we have new listeners. Yes. Strictly from apple podcast recommending our podcast organically yeah so it works so yeah like you doing i know it takes like exactly two minutes because you actually have to type something Mm -hmm. you don't have to type anything like super meaningful but like actually taking the time to write out even uh, if all you wrote was gangrenous flappy doodles it would totally help it would make sense to us too yeah um (laughs) poop loop what was it poop loop poop hole loop hole that's what it was not poop loop (laughs) Poop Loop is like the cursed uh, roller coaster from that action park place. Yeah. <laughs> Although sometimes when my dog gets uh, dingleberries, they are referred to as poop loops. <laughs> so I think that's where my brain was going. Probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's on patreon.com slash the bars ankle high if yep. you want merch. Um, you can go to bit.ly slash ankle high merch, all one word. Um, or it's also linked on our website, thebarsanklehigh.com. Yes. And, um, yeah, if you want some more natural period pain relief, then go to somedays.com slash thebarsanklehigh and use the code thebarsanklehigh at checkout. That's all one word for 20% off. Same goes for comp strips. Yeah. Calm strips is, yeah. Limbo 20 for 20% off on, on your calm strips, which... I still have on my phone, and I love it. Summoner comes. <laughs> Stop it. I can't. Every time it comes up, I'm going to make that joke. Because <laughs> that one episode, we talked about furiously thumbing strips, and it was just too funny to me. Oh, my cannot, goodness. cannot mention it. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. And we will see you next week with something we don't know what we're covering yet. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be here next Thursday with another episode to tangle your ear holes. In the meantime, the best way to support us is to follow us on Instagram at the bar is ankle high and to subscribe and leave us a five-star review on your preferred podcast streaming platform. It seems really simple, but it really is the best way to help us out, especially whenever you can actually write out a review. Great news! We have a new merch store that ships internationally and allows you to customize your merch on an endless array of products. You can head over to bit.ly slash ankle high merch to check it all out. If you want even more ankle high hot takes in your life and have a few dollars to spare, you can also join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. There's three different tiers to choose from, $2 toe rings, $5 anklets, and $10 limbo champions. Everybody gets monthly horoscopes written by yours truly, anklets get bi-weekly dysfunction junction episodes, And Limbo Champions get all of that, plus ad-free episodes. And they get added to our close friends list on Instagram. So head on over to patreon.com slash thebarsanklehigh and join today. Until next Thursday, remember to be kind to yourself because the bar is ankle high.